rest. And I want to thank you uh, for being here and sharing your thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all of you for your testimony uh, here today. And Ms. Phillips, I wasn't in the room, but I saw your testimony on, on C-SPAN uh, as the hearing progressed. And I want to thank you uh, for being here and sharing your very personal story. And it does Miley Rose's memory great credit that you're here speaking um, on behalf, not just of yourself, but as you said, millions of other American women. So now you've experienced a, a Senate hearing, lots of things are, have been said, and so I just want to give you the opportunity as we close, I may be the last uh, senator to ask questions. Um, after you've heard everything here today, um, is there anything that you would like to say in, in response um, and make sure that we can correct any misperceptions that some people have expressed? Yes, and thank you so much, Senator, for giving me this opportunity. Um, I will start by saying that um, I made a promise to Miley uh, that her name would not die with her. Um, so that is part of why my activism is so important to me, is so people know who she is. Um, I want to make two statements before I go into my, my final thing that I would like the committee to know. Um, I think it was Senator Kennedy came to this hearing knowing that there was going to be a mother here who had to make the difficult decision to terminate a 20-week pregnancy, and he decided it was in his best interest to show a 21-week fetus. Um, and his testimony was nothing but fear-mongering. From my experience, that was not my experience, um, what he was trying to um, persuade. Also, um, Ms. Mrs. Call, um, to answer your uh, question to what he had asked, um, my procedure was an abortion. It is on my medical paperwork that I had an abortion, even though my daughter was deceased. Um, it is not, it's not back and forth. Um, an abortion is a medical procedure, whether that fetus is deceased or not. But I would like to ask the committee to remember my story and to remember that I'm one of thousands, if not millions, of people in this country that need or needed abortion access. And to remember that it's not black and white and one size does not fit all. We can't be putting politics into healthcare decisions. And also to remember these facts that abortion access is essential healthcare no matter how you want to look at it. It's essential health care for so many. And exceptions don't work. I'm a living testimony to that. Tennessee had a very vague exception to protect the life of the mother. My life was at risk, and I did not qualify. I would ask the committee to consider passing a law that allows access without exception, just all across the board. Because when someone needs health care, they should be able to receive that health care when they need it, and not have to navigate the hurdles like I did. Um, because like I said, I don't know if I made it to New York, if I would be here with you today. So I'm very thankful for the opportunity that I was given to get to New York, um, and now this opportunity to fight back against the extreme bans that we're facing in many states. Uh, thank you, Ms. Phillips. Thank you for um, your earlier testimony and that, that powerful um, closing. And uh, Dr. Zahedi uh, Spung, if I could just ask you, um, to elaborate a little bit more on the real challenges doctors face in trying to navigate these legal, you know, uh, areas. Um, I, Senator Padilla asked some of the questions I had, I had planned to ask about the impact on, on doctors and their decisions to have to move to other states um, and how that leaves, you know, women in the workforce um, in, in states like Tennessee. Um, uh, at, at greater risk, but it's because doctors don't want to end up um, being fined or worse uh, for their actions. So could you, and I know from your testimony that, you know, you call upon your fellow physicians to, when you were in Tennessee and others do, to try to navigate uh, these things and, and how it's a, a, a impossible standard. And, can you just talk about that, that kind of experience of having to go through these difficult decisions when people are talking about provide, put, imposing legal penalties? Yeah, thank you so much for that question, Senator. I'm a physician and, and not a lawyer. I did 11 years of training in order to become a doctor and trust my own clinical gestalt. And then a law went into effect that took my ability to care for my patients in the way that was necessary away from me. 
and from so many others. I'll never forget after the days after Dobbs, the number of conversations I had with our hospital lawyers, my criminal defense attorney, the lawyers across the country who were trying to navigate the ever-changing experience for patients and providers. And I wasn't able to care for patients because I was trying to figure out if I could even take care of them. I had a hematologist call me and ask if he could give chemotherapy to a breast cancer patient who he had just found out was pregnant because he was worried that if he did and she miscarried, he'd go to jail for taking care of his patient. It, was, it is still terrifying. We navigate this on a regular basis with patients who are coming to us with very complex care, trying to make sure that they have all of the follow-up and the care that they need back home while still protecting their privacy. It's untenable. And I am devastated I had to leave a place that I loved and a community that I cared deeply for. Um, but I knew I couldn't do any good if I wasn't able to practice medicine anymore. Yeah. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Oops, I wasn't in the room, but I saw your testimony on, on C-SPAN uh, as the hearing progressed. A, a Senate hearing, lots of things are, have been said. And so I just want to give you the opportunity. To my, my final thing that I would like the committee to know. Um, I think it was Senator Kennedy. Kennedy. As we close, I may be the last uh, senator to ask questions. Um, after you can correct any misperceptions that some people have expressed. <laughs> Very personal story, and it does Miley rest. And I want to thank you uh, for being here and sharing your. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all of you for your testimony uh, here today. And Ms. Phil. This hearing knowing that there was going to be a mother here who had to make the difficult decision to name would not die with her. Um, so that is part of why my activism is so important to me. It was not my experience, um, what he was trying to um, persuade. Also, not just to yourself, but as you said, millions of other American women. So now you've experienced